Here's an idea that can help us uh, give us give us a little more wiggle room in choosing a good initial uh, learning rate, and that is let let's let the learning rate itself get smaller as we do more and more iterations. That way, if we chose an initial learning rate that was too big and our optimization was diverging or zigzagging a lot, maybe then maybe after a few steps and the learning rate is smaller, then it'll start converging again. So. Um, the, this idea uh, comes from the literature. I want to show this paper called Stochastic Gradient Descent Tricks. Right now we're just doing the gradient descent part. We'll talk about the stochastic part in some later videos. Um, but some interesting advice com comes from this paper. You should randomly shuffle the training examples, not have them in order of increasing x values or increasing y values, and we'll talk about that later. Uh, use preconditioning techniques. That means try to unsquish those uh, oval or elliptical contours, maybe by standardizing the data first, making its mean zero and its standard deviation one. Uh, there's other ways. Um, has some other advice in here. Uh, we'll talk about training and validation later. Um, check the gradients using finite differences, even if you have programmed the uh, gradients using uh, linear algebra and stuff, you should still check them using finite differences because people make mistakes. And uh, he even says later that this even happens in code that has been used for a long time. Um, so that's always a good idea. Um, let me show the part where he talks about, um, uh, here he's using gamma instead of alpha for um, learning rates and t is like the iteration number, iteration number one, two, three, etc. So he's saying, let's have the sum of the iteration of the learning rates at each step be infinity, but the sum of the squares of them be less than infinity. So this is probably putting you way back in your Calc 2 mindset of sequences and series, and when does the sum converge, when does the sum diverge? So something like 1 over t, that sums to infinity, but if you square each term, 1 over t squared, that converges. So that's one popular choice. Um, 1 over the square root of t is another popular choice that's in some software packages like Apache Spark. So that's what we'll be trying. Um, and let's go see the code. All right, so here's our second idea where we're passing in an initial learning rate and also a power to apply uh, for like 1 over t, 1 over t squared, 1 over t to the 0.5, and then all the other stuff. So now we're saying take that initial learning rate, multiply by basically 1 over the iteration count plus 1. That's because we're starting the iteration count at 0 and we don't want to divide by 0. So now let's try an initial learning rate of 0.1. When we tried that above, the optimization just diverged but we're going to use a learning rate decay now. Uh, we'll use 1 over the square root of the current time step, and let's see what happens there. Well, we start with a reasonable objective function value, and then it gets bigger. That's not good news, but somewhere around here it's starting to get smaller again. And if we look at the coefficients, um, we started at 0, 0. They got up into the 20s, 30s, 40s, but then they started getting smaller again uh, and ended up with pretty much the right estimates. It should be 0.75, 0 0.50 um, in the long run. Um, so apparently this uh, initial learning rate, uh, the, this learning rate decay kind of saved the optimization from diverging. Let's also try a smaller initial learning rate that zigzagged but didn't run away at least. Um, so we'll take a look at what that gives us. Um, and the objective function values seem to be decreasing nicely. Um, did, it, uh, did it zigzag or bounce back and forth? Well, a little bit, but then it seemed to kind of change in a smooth way. So uh, this certainly seems to avoid the, um, the runaway behavior. The thing to think about, though, is here I'm marking every thousand iterations and even in thousands of iterations, we aren't getting up to the, the true value of 0.75-ish um, on this axis, or the true value of 0.5 here. So it's now taking longer because we're taking smaller and smaller steps as we go along. So there's a trade-off there. Um, there are other benefits to uh, having a learning rate decay that we'll talk about in later videos. So we might be willing to put up with it here. Um, we might ask, uh, 
uh, how's the objective function value changing now that we're taking smaller and smaller uh, learning rates? So here's a semi-log y plot. If we got perfectly linear behavior here, that would be exponential decay. Uh, maybe it's becoming more linear out here. It's kind of hard to say. Um, if you see a plot like this on a semi-log y plot, you often say, well, maybe it's a power law behavior. Uh, so let's check a log log plot to see if it's linear. That's not linear. Um, so maybe it's kind of closer to exponential decay in the objective function values um, than uh, power decay. Uh, then we can try different learning rates and different uh, uh, now that we have learning rate decay and see how does that increase the range of reasonable learning rates. So here's a bunch of code that just does a bunch of loops and then plots it. So um, here we have some data with uh, learning rate decay, some rate data with no learning rate decay. So here's a question for you, and uh, this is various learning rates. Um, what do you see going on in this graph? Um, and pause the video while you think about that. All right, so what I see, these, this red and this blue is the graph we saw before uh, with no learning rate decay. And now we're seeing stable behavior with learning rate decay for much larger values of the learning rate. So that's good. Larger values of the learning rate usually give us faster steps, right, or, or faster progress toward the goal. Um, we see that uh, the more steps you take, 4,500 or 25,000, the lower your final objective function value is, uh, as long as you're in the realm of convergence over here, not over here. Uh, it's kind of interesting that at 40 steps, these things started diverging, but at 500 steps, these had not diverged. And what might be going on there is that at 40 steps, they're diverging, but then later they come back because the learning rate has gotten small enough. Um, there's one other big thing to, th to see here. Uh, with learning rate decay, these dots, even at 25,000 steps, we still aren't getting as good an objective function final value as we got with no decay at 500 steps, for example. So um, we're safer, but we're taking smaller steps and not getting as far. So there's lots of trade-offs in optimization. So far, we've been evaluating the objective function and its derivative uh, every single time we take a step, which seems like, well, what else would you do? But sometimes it takes so long to evaluate your objective function, you just can't wait for results. And that's what we're going to be talking about in the next batch of videos.